Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, this week's Sedra, Parshas by Yishlach. And in this week's Sedra, we see the encounter that, uh, that, uh, that uh, Dina has uh, uh, with uh, the Dina goes out, Miros Bivno Saaretz, I guess to associate with the, uh, the daughters of the land. My father would always say, and my father was someone that felt that the uh, relationships, we're supposed to have a good relationship with our neighbors, even those that are of a different faith and a different nationality. But he would always distinguish between fellowship and friendship. And he would say that the, it, it's one thing to be with, in friendship. It's another thing to be in fellowship. But in any case, so uh, Shechem, the, in the city of uh, Shechem, so uh, the, the leader of Shechem, I don't know, the mayor, whatever you want to call it, of Shechem was Hamor. And uh, his son was Shechem. Uh, either the son was named after the city or the city was named after the son and uh, and she he he was overtaken uh, by the way she looked and he raped her and he uh, he took her into his house and he wanted to marry her and Hamor his father was uh, was uh, uh, met with uh, with the, the sons of Yaakov, and uh, and they they devised the plan, and the plan was to tell Hamor that the people of Shem should undergo bris mila, should undergo circumcision, and then on the third day. Uh, on the third day after the uh, after the bris mila, so this is when they were least capable of taking care of themselves, of fighting in their own defense. The sons of Yaakov, or Shimon and Levi, they went in and killed all the males of Shechem. And and then when Yaakov hears about what they did. Yaakov is, uh, is very upset and very angry at them. And Yaakov says to them that you, you made me look, uh, the, you made me look like, like, like the uh, uh, very bad in the, in, the, in the eyes of the people of the land here. And Yaakov in a sense was scared that the members, the people in the surrounding areas would gather up against Yaakov and his sons and attempt to kill them. And, and then, uh, 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 that, uh, and, and actually the Ramban cites a medrash. He has some question as to the, the authenticity of the medrash that actually there were three, three wars waged against, against Yaakov uh, and, and his sons because of this incident by the neighbors of Shechem. And in any case, he says from Parshish by Yechi, when he gives Yosef Shechem, he says that I captured it becharbi uvekashti. So I captured it with my sword and my bow. It's true, Targumunculus explains it to mean with, the, with my prayers. Well, first of all, as far as the Targumunculus is concerned, uh, it seems that the, from the manuscripts of Targumunculus, that that was something substituted later, put into the Targumunculus later, uh, the and the uh, really it was literally bechar bi 
And it seems that this was an addition that was put into the Targumuntalis on the basis of the Medrash Rabbah. But in any case, so, but certainly a Mikra Yotzeh Elmide Pshuto. And so it, there, was, there is an indication in the Pasuk that there was actually, there was actually a war. And, uh, and, the, and the sons of Yaakov, the, the sons of Yaakov answered him and they say, Hachizona Yases Achoseinu. Should should he treat should, should our our sister be treated as a harlot? Now, and we don't see an answer here by uh, that that Yaakov is that Yaakov gives to that, but it's quite clear at the in Bayechi where Yaakov. Uh, chastises Shimon and Levi in the brachas, uh, and uh, and and the um, uh. Shimon Vlebiachim Kle Hamas Mikhairosehem. their weaponry is a stolen crack crap. Uh Kiba Ap uh Arapam Kiyas Vervas and Kikashasa. A Khal can be Yaakov of Pit Sam Israel. He spreads them around because and and he says also Kiba Apam Harguish over Tsona Mikushor. So the, he, he criticizes them for, for the killing. So it seems that Yaakov felt even afterwards that they did not act properly. So, but what's interesting is that the Rambam, Rambam in Parak Tess of Hilchos Malachim, he explains that the reason the, the sons of Yaakov Killed, killed, was because one of the Shiva mitzvahs b'nei Noach is is dinim, and there seems to be a machlokus, a dispute between the 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 Rambam shita and the Ramban shita as to what dinim is. Literally, dinim means law. According to the Rambam's opinion, dinim means the the setting up of a court system to enforce the observance of the Shiva Mitzvahs B'nai Noach. And the Ramban disagrees, and he says that the main part of Dinim is having a civil code and, and, and the, 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 the violation of the civil code that's considered that's considered a, a the uh, that's considered a violation of the Shiva mitzvos b'nei Noach of the seven mitzvos Noachite mitzvos. So the Rambam explains that Yaakov's sons uh, felt that on one hand Shem certainly was deserved, and the law is that the violation of the Shiva mitzvos b'nei Noach. The violation of the seven Noahite laws has as its penalty a chi of misa. It's considered a capital crime. And consequently, the Rambam says that the sons of Yaakov felt that Shem, who raped Dina, was in violation of Gezel. He, he took what wasn't his. And, but, and consequently, he was Chayiv Misa. But the community, because of the law of Dinim, had a, an obligation to, to, to enforce the observance of the Shiva Mitzvah Bene Noah. And instead of enforcing the Shiva Mitzvah B'nai Noach, they actually gave, uh, 
they gave Shechem support in what he did to Dina. And because of this, the whole city violated a capital crime. And because of this, the, the sons of Yaakov perhaps uh, saw themselves as being justified in going and killing all the males of the city. Now, the, the Ramban disagrees very strongly with the Ramban. And as I mentioned, he disagrees as to what the main focus of Dinam is. But he says, he says, if that's the case, so why is it that Yaakov is angry at them? Not only angry at them at that time, and he says, you could say, he, he felt if that's the case, then Yaakov should have, should have done what they did. And if you say that Yaakov was scared, but he should not have been critical of his sons for what they did. And even as even when he, before he died, he he cursed their their anger, and he said that they have to be dispersed because if there is a group together, they will be dangerous. So clearly, Yaakov did not was what the Shimon and Levi and the sons of Yaakov did. Was, did not meet the favor of Yaakov's eyes. And it, so, so the, and, and more than that, the Ramban, and, and because of that, the Ramban rejects the Rambam's uh, explanation. And he says that the truth of the matter is that the people of Shechem were, were Chayv Misa. They, they committed capital offense, but not because of Dinim, as the Rambam says. But the reason that he said, he says they, they committed uh, all kinds of, uh, of crimes that are as violation of the Shiva Mitzvahs B'nai Noach. They worshiped idols. He says they, they violated adultery. There were all kinds of crimes that they committed. So they, they were Chayef Misa. But he says, the reason the sons of Yaakov were, uh, the reasons the sons of Yaakov went and killed, uh, and killed uh, the, uh, the, 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 the citizens of Shrem was because of vengeance. Of course, of, of what they did, what was done to their daughter, to their sister. And, and the, 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 and, it, but they didn't have an obligation. They did not have an obligation to do it. It wasn't their responsibility. So that's why, that's why Yaakov was critical of them. But the Rambam's opinion is that they did it not because of the other sins, but they did it because they violated, they, 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 the justification was not the other sins, the justification for killing the people of Shechem, their justification for killing the people of Shechem was the law of Dina. Now, we have to understand we have to under, we have to try to understand the the uh, the the opinion of the Rambam. Now, the uh, now my father, my father suggested an answer, and before I mention that, I should say. I should mention that my father was uh, opposed to capital punishment 
not, not that he didn't feel that there were exceptions, but as a general rule, he was opposed to capital punishment. And also, Rav Henkin uh, was also opposed to capital punishment. And my father told me that he had discussed this piece of Torah that he that I'm going to say over in his name. He discussed it with Rav Henkin, and although Rav Henkin had a different shot, a different explanation of the Rambam, my father never told me what Rav Henkin's shot in the Rambam was. He says that Rav Henkin uh, expressed uh, he, 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 that he he liked very much the thought that my father that my father had said in explaining the Rambam. Now, my father said that there is a difference between there is a difference between the capital punishment or the other punishments as it applies to the Jewish people, there are so many sins that, the, the, that, there, is, that, the, that there is capital punishment is halachically prescribed by the Torah. Now it should be pointed out that the Gemara says that the necessity of proof was so great and the details in order to mete out capital punishment, the, the, the it was so extensive, and they had to be so careful that a bezdin that that would mete out capital punishment once in seven years and once in seventy years, difference of opinion was considered a bezdin, a court that sheds blood, even though literally. They were perhaps justified in what they did, but even though there was a penalty prescribed by the Torah for many sins, but there was very often there were reasons why the capital punishment could not have been met out. Of course, where there was a great necessity, we couldn't let people just violate the law like we see happening in the streets of the cities of the United States today with uh, prosecutors who, who feel that, that, the, the, that, the, uh, that the criminals should not be punished. Besden at times could exercise uh, a special power in order to stop the, the, the spread of crime. But as a general rule, the, 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 the punishment that was prescribed by the Torah is prescribed from the perspective of being a kapara, of being an atonement. Let's say for halachas, if a Jew uh, will worship idolatry, under certain circumstances, and he would he 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 is chayiv misa. It was a capital offense, and very often the capital offense could not be met out because of all the requirements that was necessary. But if if there was if there was a special need at the time. Bezdin could use other powers to, to punish the person. But in any case, so when it comes to the Jewish people, the capital offense is seen primarily from the perspective of kapara, from the perspective of atonement. When it comes to the Shiva Mitzvah B'nai Noach, when it comes to the seven Noachite laws, the capital punishment, or the punishment, I should say, is not seen from the perspective of kapara, from the perspective of atonement, but it's seen as a preventive measure, as a migdar milsa, 
to prevent people from, from, from violating the seven mitzvahs, the seven Noahite laws. In a sense, it's the Migdal Milsa. It's the service of prevention. And my father then said that the death penalty that applies to the violation of the seven mitzvahs of the Bnei Noach was to be considered a maximum penalty. In other words, it's true that one who violated the, uh, the seven Noahite laws, so he was com- considered halakhically to, to, have, to, to have violated a capital offense, and he was, he, he was, he, he, he was somebody who, who deserved, deserved to receive capital punishment. However, the Bezdin was not required to mete out the capital punishment unless the capital punishment was absolutely necessary as a preventive measure. And if a lesser penalty would be successful in achieving that goal, the lesser penalty would be the preferred method to use. And my father said that that was the reason that Yaakov, Yaakov Avinu was angry at his sons. In other words, a penalty could have and perhaps should have been used. Some form of penalty should have been used. But at that point, Yaakov Avinu felt that the extreme penalty should not have been used. And he was angry at his sons, and specifically at Shimon Velevi, for using the extreme penalty. And he said, Arapam. He says, Why did they do it? They didn't do it to enforce the law, they did it because of anger. And anger can never play a role or should not play a role in imposing the maximum penalty. And that was my father, one of my father's reasons to be against, besides the fact that he thought that very often uh, the, the death penalty is met out against people who perhaps were mistakenly identified as the perpetrators of of many of of crimes. But he did say to me that there are situations where the death penalty, where the death penalty would be a proper penalty. He just didn't think that people would be able to, to, to limit themselves to those situations. Now, the, uh, and we could understand, now when we say that it was a preventive measure, it wasn't just as a preventive measure for the person who committed the penalty. In other words, if there would be a penalty there would be an assumption people will be scared to do it. But I think when we look at the streets and I'll go uh, get into it at the end of the share. But you see, when when action is not taken, when people are allowed to roam the streets, to destroy, to steal,
to injure in a maximum way. The fear of acting improper is no longer there. So because of that, it's necessary. That's part of the halacha of dinim. That, that we have to impose the observance of the shiva mitzvahs, to impose the observance of the shiva mitzvahs b'nei noach, even to the extent of imposing a capital offense. However, if a lesser penalty would be, could be used to do that, that would be the preferred method. Now, and that's why Yaakov criticized uh, criticized his his sons. However, I think, but the sons of Yaakov were not chas v'shalom to be considered murderers because the, they did commit, the people of Zdom did commit a capital offense. And that's what the Rambam is coming to tell us. Since they committed a capital offense, even though there might have been an alternative method of dealing with them. And perhaps the alternative method was the preferred method of dealing with them. Killing them was not considered murder. Now, I want to suggest, perhaps, that we could suggest another answer. And I think this explanation works very well in the in the uh, in the Psukim. As the Ramban points out, the Ramban points out that yes, they committed capital offenses, except that the Ramban's opinion is that Dinim was not one of the capital offenses that they committed. But the and the, the they, but they, even according to, but, but, but the Ramban points out it wasn't their responsibility to do it. I want to suggest that alternative, we could say that the, the idea, the Shiva Mitzvah B'nai Noach, as my father said, was the Torah decreed the Shiva Mitzvah Ben Enoach as, as capital offenses, as a preventive measure. That's true. But it's the town, the people, the community has to impose, has a responsibility of imposing the Shiva Mitzvah, but the observance of the seven Mitzvahs of the Bnei Noach. But there is another situation that gives, gives us the right to impose the penalties of the Shiva Mitzvah, Bnei Noach. And that is for safety's sake. In other words, the town has the obligation, a double obligation. First of all, it has, to, it has the obligation of creating an atmosphere that people will not violate the seven commands that God imposed on mankind. But then, besides that, as because those were commands given by God. But if the violation of these seven commands create the danger for people, penalties can be met out to prevent the danger. And this was the argument of the sons of Yaakov. From the perspective of Avodah the Ramban says they were required, they, they committed capital offenses 
on the basis of the idolatry that they did. Yes, they committed, but the Avodazara, the, the idolatry that they did was not something that endangered the family of Yaakov. And consequently, since the family of Yaakov were not part of the community of, Zdo, uh, uh, of Shem, so they did not have the obligation of enforcing the observance of the seven mitzvahs as commands of God. But they felt because they became endangered because of the violation of the seven mitzvahs. In other words, by the raping of Dina, that was a violation of the seven mitzvahs. And to them, that presented a threat to them, not just because of that one event that happened, but because of future events. And perhaps not just because of the people of Shechem, but perhaps it presented a threat to them because if people saw that Shechem could get away with it, then even other places that the Jewish people came they would become endangered. So where the Shiva Mitzvot B'nai Noah in danger, that is justification for meeting out a penalty to ensure our safety. And that's what the sons of Yaakov answered Yaakov. They said, HaChizona Yasa Sachoseinu should we let our sister be like a harlot? And it's not just because of the past event, but it's because of the future possibilities as well. And not just because of Shem himself, but it does the but this will be wherever the Jews go, there will be this type of attitude. So, so their argument was, sure, we don't have an obligation on the basis of enforcing the observance of the Shiva Mitzvah B'nai Noach. We are not part of the community of Shem, and we don't want to be part of the community of Shem but we have an obligation on the basis of assuring our safety, the safety of our community. And consequently, they, they, that, they felt that that was their justification. And why, why did Yaakov criticize them? It seems that that was a valid argument. But Yaakov said, what's going to happen? He says, he says, Vayama Yaakov al Shimon Valevi, Achartamosi. He said, uh, he, 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 he said, you, ha, uh, you have this composed me. Lahabisheni uh, Biyoshbe Haaretz, Bachnani Vaprizi. Banim is say misboy, there are so many, and I am a few. Benespo alai bi kuni benishmanati, I will be annihilated. Aniu basi. What kind of protection? Yes, you're right in theory. Theoretically, you're right. But that isn't the real protection. The protection. What kind of protection it is if we are endangering ourselves even more so? That's why Yaakov, that's why Yaakov uh, criticized them, even on the day he died. Why? 
In other words, if, if you, when a person is angry, when a person acts out of anger, he doesn't evaluate the situation. A person has to, has to evaluate the situation. Perhaps, and perhaps, perhaps there, there, the per, a person has to evaluate the situation. Perhaps it's be counterproductive. But certainly, as my father said, it was not a situation of the Chas Shalom, Shimon and Levi being considered murderers because they wore Chayef Misa. They, they, they violated, they violated the, uh, a, cap, a capital offense by the violation of Dinim. And this is the way we could understand, we could understand the Rambam also. Now, I think, I think that we have to understand this concept of Migdar Milsa as a preventive measure. As I mentioned, Migdar Milsa isn't, doesn't just mean to prevent the person who did it from doing it again or from doing it in the first place. Mikdar Milsa means to prevent people from learning from the offense of that this person does. Because there are certain actions that if a person takes those actions, he has an impact on others. And I'll give an example. And especially when it comes to things like murder and rape and even stealing, as we see today in our streets, where, where law is ignored. It's not only ignored, but the violation of law is actually encouraged. You see people burning buildings and it's on television. You see them bombing police cars. And to a certain degree, you see people saying, Officials saying the people will do what the people will do. And of course, we find all kinds of reasons to, we find all kinds of reasons to have sympathy for the criminal and no sympathy for for the for, for for the victim people are pushed onto train tracks and somehow all this goes unpunished we are not only not taking the proper actions but to a certain degree, we are responsible for the effect that it has. And especially when it comes, especially when it comes to murder. I remember, I've mentioned it before, that, that when Eichmann, Yimach Shemo, was in trial in Israel, and the court decided, certainly rightfully so, that he deserved the death penalty, which he ultimately got. And at that time, 
the Catholic Church was somewhat critical of the giving of the of the passing of the death penalty, an Eichmann, Yimach Shemo. And not just the Catholic Church, but unfortunately, some Jewish philosophers also advocated not to use the death penalty. And if there was ever a case where the death penalty was, should be used, this was the case. And I was a young boy at the time, and I asked my father, what was the heter? And I knew that my father in general was opposed to the death penalty, but I knew that my father felt that there were exceptions. And I wanted to know halachically, I had no doubts that Eichmann deserved the death penalty. I don't think that we could even think of a penalty that would have been adequate for him. I asked my father halachically, how are we to understand it? Certainly when he is in jail, He is not in a position to kill anybody else. He's not a road ape anymore. And my father told me that many Achronim say that although today I could think of other reasons uh, for it, but my father told me that many Achronim say that when somebody, when the, very often there were programs against the Jewish people in different towns, and sometimes those who initiated these programs, usually, by the way, behind the scenes, the programs were initiated. And certainly by, by some of the priests. As Golda Meir told the Pope, when the Pope arrogantly complained about how the Jewish people in Israel go after the, the uh, Arab nations who send terrorists. He didn't complain. He all, they always say, the Catholic Church always say, it is our hope that the cycle of violence will not continue. They always say that after, after the terrorists come into Israel and kill children, place bombs where there are carriages. They say that for Israel, to prevent Israel from trying to protect itself. So I asked my father. So my father told me, he said, that many of the postkims say that when the leaders of the pogroms, after the pogroms are over, fall into the hands of the Jews. The Jews, and even though they're no longer in a position to murder Jews, their very survival is an inspiration to others that they can do it and get away with it. So in a sense, they become road them, even without holding guns. In other words, these people who lead pogroms, and there certainly was no greater pogrom than the Holocaust. They are considered road them. 
even when they're not capable of committing murder anymore. And this is a similar halacha. The idea of Lemigdar Milsa is as a preventive measure, it's not just a person has to know that the, the, for, the, for that person himself to prevent him from committing murder, to prevent him from violating the Shiva Mitzvot B'nai Noach. The Mikdar Milsa means to let everybody, that no one should learn from them how to act. That's the Lamigdar Milsa. And I think to a certain degree, the attitude, Minag Yehudim, Afila Hatov Shebehem, Keminag Agayim Asher Besochem Heim Yoshbin. The Minag, the custom of the Jews in their own community, is influenced by the nations of the world. When there is havoc there, so we don't think, just as the nations of the world today, everybody runs wild and does whatever he wants, irregardless of the harm that it causes. But we have to realize that if one person gets away with it, then two people are going to get away with, and three people get away. It's not enough to put restrictions on that person. The focus can just be, of course, this varies from situation to situation. The focus can just be, what will this individual do? The focus has to be, what that this person did and got away with it, what impact will it have on others? And unless we change our attitude, unless we change our attitude in this regard, then we will bear a responsibility. Or those who have this attitude bear a responsibility for those who took a lesson from those who harmed others. And we as citizens of the United States have a responsibility to make sure that the law, certainly in case of violence, of murder, of robbery, will be enforced. Because it's not just a question of that person it's a question of the impact that will have on others as well. Okay. We have a, a few questions already. I'm sure. So, uh, one to clarify, um, if so, Yaakov felt that, in, in because by his son's killing, Outshem, it made them less safe. Then they had no obligation to enforce. That's correct. Even Mr. Spinenoa. That's correct. Because they, they were not obligated because of the observance of the Shiva Mitzvah B'nai Noach. They were obligated because for, from a safety perspective to maintain their safety. Okay. Um, according to the Ramban, what about, uh, are all citizens in Chicago responsible for the shootings in Chicago? It doesn't matter if the victims are Jews or not Jews. According to the Ramban or according to the Rambam? Uh, uh, Rambam. <laughs> I, I wouldn't say that the, they're, they're all obligated. Uh, we certainly, uh, let me just say, those who, uh, those who, who, who uh, support the policy of not meeting out some kind of uh, uh, of meeting out some kind of resistance to those who commit these crimes, bear some kind of obligation. 
But the fact is the fact that we do have a criminal justice system, just because it's not perfect, is that a deficiency in- I, 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 I'm not talking about where it's not perfect. I'm talking where it, it doesn't exist, where it just dismisses things automatically. Okay, so I'm jumping a little bit here because it's kind of a similar question. Based on the post from saying that pogrom leader survival becomes road film, why doesn't the IDF eliminate rather than imprison uh, terrorists or people who plan terrorism? I, my guess is because their feeling is that, uh, again, the idea of, of being road aid is to, to maintain the safety of the Jewish people. And the uh, safety of the Jewish people can be viewed, uh, certainly from the state of Israel, from the perspective of this one situation. And if uh, they just went around, of course, killing everybody, uh, all the terrorists, uh, if they would uh, kill all the terrorists, so there would be a change in attitude of the world towards Israel. So Israel has to feel what is its best and it's its, in, in its interest to maintain the safety. And there, there would be valid arguments in many different directions. I mean, this, what I'm gonna ask next is my follow-up to this question that someone else asked, but I think it's beyond the scope of this share, but in regard to prisoner swaps, giving up terrorists who are Again, alive- they, and... they, 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 they would have to, Okay, you know, we want to save the lives of our prisoners. Also, we have to we have to be able to evaluate that situation. There are halachas about it, uh, the Gemara and Gittin and that type of thing. But uh, we have to evaluate the situation. What would be considered maintaining the the lives of the Jewish people in the greater fashion? Instead, what about if people don't know the Shiva Mitzvos B'nai Noah? Would they still be guilty for uh, violating them? I would think yes. Because the the ignor mitzvah, ignorance of the law is no excuse. That's right. The, the, the Shiva Mitzvos B'nai Noah, for the most part, for something that people should understand themselves. Um. Uh, this question is, let's say a judge at the Nuremberg trials, how could they remove emotions from themselves? If they hear about these terrible things, how could the judge remove emotions and just judge based on the strict law and not based on what their emotion would tell them? I mean, uh, the, the, uh, you see uh, that, that I'm not sure exactly what the question means. But uh, if they're able to evaluate, if, if the emotions comes from the evaluation rather than the evaluations from the emotions, there's a difference between where the emotions come from the evaluation or the evaluation comes from the emotions. Um, then this is actually an interesting question. Uh, according to what you said about that Yaakov felt that because it, they would be less safe, so they shouldn't enforce it. Uh, how does, what about the actions of the Maccabim uh, in the time of Hanukkah? Were they, by the fact that they attacked, were they making things more dangerous for everyone else? Well, first of all, there we, we were, to, we're talking about the laws of the Jewish people. And the, uh, and the laws of the Jewish people, there were many had harem for them to go to war. One is habar laharcha hashkem lahargo. That's one thing. And you see, ultimately, the Maccabees were uh, were victorious, uh, even though they started off as a small group, but uh, they were victorious. And a lot of the uh, sins involved were ones of Yarog bal Yavor, you know, so... Uh, and uh, and they were the, they were defending themselves, you know, because the the sins were Yarval Yavo. They couldn't commit those sins, and if, by not committing those sins, the Greeks were trying to kill them to destroy them. And so, uh, 
uh, and uh, many other terrible things. So just to summarize this, at the time of Hanukkah, the Jews were already a nation, and they had halachas of going out to war, and that's different. They had than Yaakov and his going out to war. As a matter of fact, I, I, I personally was wondering whether, of course, this is not what the Ramban is saying, although I, at one point I was trying to read it into the Ramban, but I was wondering whether Yaakov's sons didn't base it, perhaps, on the mitzvah of Habar Laharcha Hashkem Lahargo, Tsaras and Yanim, Kitsarim Heim Lachem. On that basis, that that was a that would be a possibility also. So that's uh, you know, that, that would be a possibility. So someone who keeps asking about the idea of emotions, um, let me instead of asking their question, let me try to to, to word in a way where if I get this thing, but um yeah. Once okay, so again, this this week's parsha, this was before Bnei Yisrael were a nation, and different the whole Torah and all the halacha, of the laws of Melchama applied. But let's say in the time of Mel, of Melchama, so the person is asking, how do we remove all emotions when we're not Melachim? So I think maybe an answer would be is that one of the reasons when we go to war we have to ask the Sanhedrin is that the Sanhedrin is not well, people. Muhammad Smith, so you don't have to ask the son. That's true. But let's say Muhammad Rosh uh, or, or, you know, David and the Gedud Amaleki at the beginning of Brachos, whatever. So if they felt there was a need. But Rashi there says that he, he only asked the Sanhedrin for, in order that they should be Mispalo on them. Gemara okay. Rashi and Brachos. So, okay, so maybe, so according to some Shitos, in the case of Muhammad Rosh yeah. Would, the, would the case be you'd ask the Sanhedrin because they would be a, a non-emotional, objective as opposed to subjective? Body. Possibly, but uh, halachically, I think the more the reason is because the Sanhedrin represents the Jewish people, so it's possible that it is it had to be a war uh, of the Jewish people, not of an individual, not of the king, but a war of the Jewish people. But it's possible. Could say to be a war of the Jewish people, you needed the evaluation of Sanhedrin. Okay. Okay. So thank you very much.